said it was watching uh, Cynthia Cooper play. And she then had a dream. And she said she will always value and remember that. And she wants to make sure that she gives back to every eight-year-old girl and then some. Uh, and also think it's very important for boys, you know, for your son uh, to, to see whether he, you know, is there for the basketball or, or, or other reasons. It's He's now going to accept that women are playing professional sports and it normalizes for him women in positions of leadership, women playing sport. And, and both of them are incredibly valued. Well, and... I noticed you have an MBA, and this isn't all, I mean, this is basketball, but you've got a business to run, too. And when we're running a business, I feel, I feel the onus is on me to bring someone along. You know, it's, we got to hold the door open, and what does that look like in your world? I mean, I've, I've, I try to, as, as much as I can, get those managers to general manager. You know, I've got four, four women, four female general managers and one regional general manager. That's something that's really important to me. How does that transpire in your world? Uh, it's incredibly powerful what, what you're talking about. And, and I think that whether it's a staffing situation, I think we're, we're mindful of making sure that opportunities exist uh, for women, for people of color. You know, we, we're just, we're, we're big on uh, inclusion, uh, diversity of thought, uh, we think that makes us stronger. And then I think with regard to our players, it's, it's allowing them, giving them a platform. You know, so moving them is not just helping them improve their shot or do something basketball-wise. It's helping them to become the fullest person that they're trying to become. And so we try to empower them. Uh, in terms of what their interests are and surround them with people uh, that can assist and, and, and continue to shine the light on, on whatever those things are. So, you know, Steph, you and I are in, in really fun roles. Like you said, we can, we can actually impact lives. And, you know, p- there are some people that talk about these things, but we can actually do things to help it along. And, and uh, you know, kudos to you for, you know, what you're doing with your staff, but then also uh, sponsoring our show. You know, that's putting your money where your, where your mouth is, you know, uh, in supporting the only female podcast uh, in Jim's network. So I, I really appreciate that. Way to go, Jim. Well, we need more. I mean, you know, I just started out with my geeky white male friends, but we do plan <laughs> to expand into better and, and different territories. But And honestly, I've had Cheryl on other podcasts as a guest before. And frankly, Who wouldn't? I mean, exactly, really? well, she's, well, she was always the best guest we ever had, but... I never really thought a four-time WNBA champion would do a, a regular show. And <laughs> I was just, fi- finally I just asked, which is what you should always do it in always journalism starts with or asking. in life. Just ask the stupid question. And she said yes. I was like, oh, why didn't I do that a year ago? <laughs> so well, I, why would I not? I, I think, you know, you know you're how busy, I t- that's why. Well, well, you know, but you have to make time for these things. Right. I, I can't be the person that says we don't get enough coverage. We don't get enough of a voice. And then when you ask me to provide a voice, I can't say no. Uh, so I think you have to make time for those things. You know, just like with the players, it's more than just playing. For me, it's more than coaching. And this is an opportunity to, to, to be that, to, you know, to use our voices in a variety of ways. So I appreciate that you made the ask. Do you have another question? No pressure. How do, how, yeah, I do. <laughs> how, you know, there are several other franchises in town. What do they think? You know, do, do you ever get together with the other heads of the other teams? And, and are they just like, wow, you know, <laughs> four times? Yeah. I, I tell you what, that's after the fourth one. I, I had had some interactions along the way with, with uh, all the what I call the brother teams. And they're all incredibly supportive. You know, and I'm talking the highest of leadership, whether it's Dave, Dave St. Peter with, with, the, uh, with the Twins. You know, I spent some time with Thad and Derek. I've spent some time with Rick Spielman with the Vikings. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I think they have an appreciation for it. You know, I, I love the group that we have in town. They're, they're an enlightened group that they're not going, well, they're just women. That doesn't mean anything. They've asked me to come speak to their group. They've asked me. They've embraced the idea that we have something really special going on. And then certainly for me, I'm embracing the idea that they've been in pro sports for a long, long time, you know, whether it's professional baseball, you know, for over 100 years, that there's a way of doing things. I want to I want to learn more. How can we make our business better? How can we use analytics better? Uh, So I love the fact that we have a partnership with each of the teams. 
Thank you, Steph. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to say about Freehouse while we have you? Just take a note. It's, uh, what, 86 degrees out today, and that beautiful patio is open, and we're, we're ready to go. We're Absolutely. ready to rock this and try to make up for as much of that uh, snowy winter as we had. We're ready to rock some basketball, and we're ready to... Have some patio pounders out there. there you have go. the blueberry blonde, right? Have them get the blueberry blonde. And, and my wife's favorite is the Colch, by the way. So the Col- highly Colch is our Colch. number one seller. Yeah. Blueberry blonde is so aromatic. I love that one. Um, these guys back here, you know, they won a couple of medals. I'm pointing, I know no one can see me do this, but behind me is the brewmaster in the brewery. And these guys won two. Um, Two medals at the Great American Beer Fest. Oh, that's great. And the competition for those things is incredible these days. Huge. And it's like the Oscars. Like, yeah. it's these guys, these guys brought home two Oscars. That's awesome. So we're making some pretty darn fine, damn fine. Can I say that? You can beer. say it's <laughs> a podcast. You can say whatever <laughs> you want. That's awesome. Go have a drink and come back and say some funny things. Absolutely. Steph, we appreciate you having us. Thanks to you. Thanks to the free house. And good questions, by the way. Thanks. Uh, so. And by the way, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you? Are you? No, you, Steph. Are you? Me? Are you close with Amy Klobuchar? Um, you stay in touch with her. We stay in touch a little bit. Okay. I know I'm going to hit a uh, breakfast next week. That she actually it's Saturday. It's Saturday. Oh. Um, that she's doing in my neighborhood. So I'm a big fan. Every time I've been to Washington, uh, whether it's been with the restaurant group or um, any other industry group, she of all of our Minnesota delegation, she has never turned us down. Always made time. Even if it's popping out a committee out in the hallway and I only got five minutes for you or I got 15 minutes, but I won't won't say names, but there's so many of our people who don't have time for everyday people like me. And, you know, it's, it's, it matters. It really matters. She is the hardest working, got to be one of the hardest working senators out there and certainly representing us well. I, obviously, I don't know her well, but I know, obviously, I worked with her dad when I first got to town, and she just, the times I've talked to her, I'm just incredibly impressed. So, If I were in a fight, I'd want her in my yeah, corner. That's absolutely. right. Absolutely. Thank you again, Steph. We'll talk again soon. Uh, the next show, by the way, at the Free House will be June 11th. We haven't set an exact time. It'll probably be a happy hour-ish show. Follow us on social media to get updates on exact times. We'll be doing another three shows at least at the uh, Free House. Again, North Loop, right off Washington, patio, restaurant, bar, etc. You mentioned uh, taking a social lead. I do find it really interesting that it's basketball coaches who are willing to say, this is what I think. This is what I stand for. Hate me if you want. Whether it's Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, Stan Van Gundy, you, the Lynx players. Why is that? Well, to be very frank, I think we, we have a more progressive culture. Um, you know, I think there's been some turnover in, in terms of ownership. I think we've got a different mindset at the, at the, league, the league office, you know, in, in Adam Silver. Um, so I think, I think we're taking the lead and we're, you know, taking bold steps and bold actions. Uh, Adam Silver is far more in tune to an NBA player or a WNBA player than I believe that Roger Goodell is with the NFL players. But hold on. I see Roger Goodell hugging his best friends during the draft. It's, those are very real, very deep relationships. Yeah, yeah. Those are great photo ops. <laughs> uh, but, but, no, I mean, I think it's, you know, I mean, just look at some of the ownership uh, in the NFL and, and, and their, their positions. Um, you know, you, you have something like, the, like the, the Philadelphia Eagles who were very supportive of their players, and then you have... And funny, it didn't keep them from winning a championship. It, it, you notice that? That's right. So, yeah, it, do, it does not get in the way, and I think that they sold out. I sold out the, uh, the, the Lincoln Financial, I think, mm-hmm. uh, on every occasion. So uh, that's just an excuse, you know, to, to, to use something like that to say that we can't because we're afraid of the fans' backlash. They would be surprised, uh, I think, of how much support and, and how much respect. Um, at the end of the day, I know fans want to watch the game, whatever it is, whether it's football or basketball, and we all want to play, you know, play and coach the game. But we're all people, too, and, and we're all in this together. And uh, I just think it makes sense for an owner to uh, to to be in touch uh, with their employees, whether that's in, in sport or whether that's in corporations, and you know to stand up on a pulpit and, and hand down and say you will do these things. That's not going to be a successful franchise. One topic at Media Day today was, and I asked some of the questions I'm interested in. That how do you get players to come here? It seems like you have made the links a destination for free agents. 
Uh, is that just the resume? Is that the way you treat people? Is that uh, an outreach by your current players? How does that work? Well, I would say the number one reason why players want to come here is the, the players that we have here. We, we have uh, Simone Augustus, who was here before all of us got here. Uh, Simone is like the easiest going superstar there ever was. Lindsey Whalen, incredibly humble. Rebecca Brunson has more championships than any other player in the league. Incredibly humble, only wants to win, doesn't care who gets the credit. Sylvia Fowles came here because she shared that, that mindset. At the end of the day, you know, in addition to having a great owner, a great fan base, uh, tremendous facilities, those are all important things. But the most important one is who are they going to share the locker room with? Who are they going to be in the trenches with all the time? And I think that our players uh, have earned a reputation of just being uh, great to be around, tremendous people, tremendous teammates, uh, and that, that we're willing to share the load. We don't, we don't care who gets the credit. We do have a microphone up here. If anybody wants to come up and ask a question, feel free to do so at any time. Uh, feel free to interrupt us because we're not that important. It's okay. Uh, we have a live question. Excellent. My name is uh, Jacqueline. I'm a fifth, fifth year season ticket member. Can you tell us a little more about Andy Miam and has she been able to, get, been able to practice for you? Yeah. yeah, thanks for your question. Thanks Very informed here. fan. Appreciate I appreciate it. that. To understand our roster, that we have a, a player that we signed in the offseason. It was a French post player. That uh, Her name is Indy Miam. She and Cecchi Zandalassini uh, was the, you know, the Italian that we signed last year. They play on the same team in Italy, in Schio. And they just completed their, their playoffs. Unfortunately, it went to a five-game series. Uh, we sat in our office uh, after game three, or, you know, for game three, hoping they were going to get a sweep. Didn't happen. Game four, I'm sorry, yeah, then game four didn't happen. And so we thought, okay, well, you know, we, we'll get a couple days with her. We're very well-versed in her game in that uh, internationally. So James Wade, my assistant coach, uh, is, is closely tied with, with the French. He's, his wife is, is from France, and so he's very closely tied. But then I also had experience internationally with USA Basketball, so I've seen Indy. But what we don't know is how Indy is going to perform in the WNBA. And I think that's always a thing that kind of makes you, you know, uh, unsure. Can, they, can she do exactly the same thing she did for Skio and then she does for the French national team? I hope. Uh, and so we literally, today was her first day. She and Chechi landed yesterday. Uh, they came down to, to Glenn Taylor's with us. So that was their, their first day to go enjoy uh, you know, great lasagna dinner put on by, by Becky Taylor and great team, team bonding. Um, now, Indy knows probably three, four of the players. So there's some familiarity. Simone actually played with Indy. And so Simone is excited about the signing. And, and, and that's big. You know, whenever Simone agrees with you, you're in business. So, you know, we, we were happy to, to get her to sign off on that. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to find out very soon. We've got three days before we play. And so we've got, we've, you know, we, we've got to get her up to speed in a hurry. We need her. Uh, we've put a lot of eggs in her basket, and, and we'll see how it works out. Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Does she, have a, does she have a contract? She, yeah, we, we signed her. So she's a, she was signed as a free agent. So she is on a, a training camp contract. So uh, rosters are due at 4 p.m. tomorrow. We have practice. So if she's really bad, we might just cut her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, thanks to both of you. I really love this podcast. Awesome. Thank um, you. Sidestep to a slightly different topic. Thoughts on Minnesota Whitecaps signing with the NWHL? Great question. Lo- love, Thank obviously. You. you know, you, you know, I would be thrilled. Um, any chance that we get to add a women's professional team here locally for our community, I think is 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 a wonderful thing. It's it's progress. I think one of the things I've enjoyed about Minnesota. I didn't necessarily know that. Uh, when I wasn't here, it was more when I was going to be moving here. I learned more about the area uh, and how progressive it is. And I mean, heck, we had Jesse Ventura, a former wrestler, as a as a governor. So you know, I thought this has got to be a really cool area. And so I learned a lot uh, about uh, what works here. Uh, that that uh, there there is a fair amount of uh, support of women. You know, un- unlike in, in some other areas. And so, and then you add that with hockey. You know, why would there not be a women's hockey team in Minnesota, right? So I think it's an incredibly exciting time uh, for Minnesota fans to, uh, to now get behind another team and to think that the number of girls that are playing hockey at a young age, like Lindsay Whalen did when she was a youngster, to now have a dream that they can maybe possibly play professional hockey, what, what a wonderful day. 
Do you have any advice for that team or that league? Yeah, you know, uh, something that I think the W.